Hey everybody. Uh, got this little model here of uh, gripper assembly. It's kind of fun. Um, it utilizes uh, a linkage system in order to actuate uh, with a motor. And you can see as the motor rotates about 45 degrees or so, the jaw is opening and closing. So it's a pretty straightforward build actually. Uh, if you look at what it entails, um, you know, a simple motor mount plate, you know, the hole in the uh, footprint of the motor accepted there, um, a couple of pivot points that are a specific dif distance from uh, the center line of the motor or the output shaft. So from here to here, um, it can be whatever you design, you know, whatever you're designing to, whatever your challenge is. And then, um, you know, that will set uh, this distance right here will set the distance of your linkage, uh, this one and this one, and then here to here. And if you look at the configuration of that in the perfect attitude like this, right, for calculating that out is pretty straightforward. Um, it creates a right triangle, right, to each one of them. So you'd be able to figure that out pretty easily. Um, this type of a gripper, <clears throat> It works on an arc. As you can see, the pivot points are right here and here. So this works on an arc. And, I mean, that's pretty common stuff, right? But when your grippers work on an arc like this, it really determines if your target is someplace like, we'll say, here. So your positioning of your motor output shaft and your pivot points to the target that you want to grip to is more important because that arc never changes and um, so positioning is uh, very important uh, that's one of the reasons you'll see uh, you'll see in industry a lot of times they use parallel grippers like on uh, robotic arms and such uh, because positioning of the target isn't as critical um, and usually they work on pneumatics so uh, not a linkage system um, and they just work because the uh, the pneumatics is a little more responsive than a me mechanical linkage like this. But uh, anyhow, that's one of the drawbacks of it, but it is a pretty standard, straightforward, fun build. Um, in this case, I just got solid jaws. So the, the geometry of the target that you're looking to pick up is important too because when these swing an arc, if they go beyond, like we'll say, we'll call this the center line where they're parallel together. If it goes beyond it, and then you'll only have point contact right here and here. So if your target was thinner and these swung like this, you'd only have point contact here, right? Um, and the same goes for if it's something bigger, you'd only have the point contact here. So optimal is that the geometry fits the design and where these are going to close parallel to it. Um, so one way around that, or to make it a little more inclusive to different geometries, um, you can use this adjustable finger on the end of, the, of your gripper lever that is compliant to whatever you're trying to pick up. So in this case, I just put these little round objects so as the gripper were to close based on a constant pivot point, um, you can see how the gripper itself will adjust to pick that up at um, those two points on that V. And again, if the geometry is a little different, it's compliant to whatever that is, right? You can see in something bigger, I'm not closing as far, but I'm still able to have this jaw adjust to the geometry that I'm trying to pick up. And that's just really as simple as adding a pivot point to uh, maybe this location right here, instead of having these two screws fixing this um, solid to your gripper arm, maybe these aren't there and maybe it's a pivot point like you see down in this part of the model. So that's kind of fun. It gives you uh, not so much a do this, don't do that type of uh, scenario, but um, 
you know, it would be specific to whatever your build is as to which way you would want to go with that. So um, pretty fun build, pretty straightforward. Um, pivot points, all the standard assembly practices that uh, we're developing <clears throat> in uh, between bushings or um, bushing materials as you pivot points. Um, uh, one last thing I want to talk about before I end this video is amounting to the motors is always kind of, uh, it's one of them sticky points because that's like should be a starting point, right? So we have the output shaft and we have uh, the spline that accompanies that. That makes it so the output shaft, when it actuates, it doesn't slip. Well, these brass adapters that are available in the kit materials, um, they have a spline inside one end of them that is how you would adapt to that motor. So you match the spline up and now it won't slip. So how I made this um, this portion of the uh, of the rotation on the motor attached to these coupler links um, with this offset, you can see that the radius from the center out to here that gives it its stroke. We call that. Um, I made this Delrin block big enough so that I could offset my drive from the center and I pressed it into this Delrin piece. So this is actually up inside of this part. It presses right up inside the middle of it. And we do that by drilling a hole in this and um, the hole is about uh, like one thousandth of an inch smaller than the major diameter of the brass piece and it presses in and that press bit should be great enough to uh, keep that from slipping inside. So there's another option uh, uh, to adapt to the motor. Um, maybe not even in this application, but somewhere else in your build. So, um, so there it is. Pretty cool gripper assembly. Uh, the servo, you would use the motor in its servo mode, not in its continuous mode, right? Because this is about 45 degrees of rotation. So that's kind of where we'd want to be. In order to go 365, uh, spacings would have to be accommodating that. And um, this particular design, it doesn't have that. So once again, fun build, uh, pretty simple. Not a lot of components, but uh, a lot of action. All right, hopefully that helps. All right, so if you're looking at um, the gripper assembly, um, it's got a slight variation from in the video. You'll see that I have these pins sticking out of this, this hub right here that come and they make contact with these two brand new posts that I put in. And the reason I put those in, as you can see, is to limit the rotation of the gripper. If we go too far, and try to bring this all the way around 360 degrees, what happens is um, because of the the length of our linkage, it ends up binding. Um, this one's slightly longer than, we'll say, this one. So we get a binding. It's a, it has limitation. Like on all the devices, um, that's kind of a great point when you're, when you're looking at all of the models and you're actuating them, whether it's the rack and pinion or whether it's a a scissor lift or a linear um, slide, um, they have limitations and it's kind of fun to explore that and get a feel for that um, while you're designing. So that's the slight change. It didn't change the device itself. It, it just changed the amount of rotation that it has. Okay.